This is a story about dating. And while the circumstances are a bit unique, I think the story is really quite average, universal even. Like all stories about dating, it has very little to do with the man or woman on the other end of the text, and much more to do with our relationship to ourselves. It's a story about pain and joy, fantasy versus reality, security, vulnerability, the known and unknown, risk and reward, and how we really can't have one without the other. It's a story about how we build security for ourselves, protect that security with everything we have, and then sometimes, every once in a while, choose to surrender that security completely into the hands of a stranger. I'm going out tonight, I'm being all right, gonna let it all hang out. The best thing about being an old man is the prerogative to have a little fun, yeah. Oh, 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 we're totally crazy, we'll get them later. Men's shirt, short skirts, oh, 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 really go wild, yeah. Okay, on Friday, four days from now, I'm going on a date with a man from the street who I've never met, with whom I've spent about six months making extensive, silent eye contact. Like I made my the first video about it, what was that like? That was like in the middle of the summer. It had, it had been going on for several months before I ever spoke about it on video. This has been going, I wanna say like six or seven months or something. And here's the thing, there's no way, there's no way for the reality to live up to the fantasy and this build up. There's no way, it's impossible. So I should just get that out of the way. Like it's not, it's the, it's, the best part is right now. Nothing could top it. There's no way a real person could live up to the fantasy. It's like in Jaws, you know, Spielberg, when he was making Jaws, they were like trying to make this mechanical shark and they had 1970s technology. Eventually he realized that like just not showing the shark, never showing the shark, leaving it up to the viewer's imagination was so much more powerful than any shark he could actually physically create. So you don't see the actual shark in Jaws for like 80% of the way through the video. You don't see it. The shark exists in your imagination. And that is the hottest shark of all. I mean, I feel like I'm having, I'm having like a sexual awakening right now. And there's no way a real person can live up to this. The amount of tension and stress. Uh, I can't sleep. I can't eat. I just made, I just made lunch. I can't eat it. Who cares? It's 4 p.m. I haven't had anything to eat and I won't be. I feel like I'm deteriorating. What is it? What the hell is it? I'm so dramatic. This is my problem. I'm so dramatic. Okay, so problem number one, the reality could never live up to the fantasy. Problem number two, I'm dramatic. End of sentence. One of the things I have the most anxiety about is telling people I have a YouTube channel. Like if you if you meet me in real life or whatever, like I, I don't really talk to my friends about YouTube. I never tell people I have a YouTube channel. If they know, they know. But I, I, I talk to my family about it quite a bit but I don't really talk to anyone else about it. They just feel like separate lives and YouTube can be so strange and specific that it feels hard to explain to people some of the experience of it. And so I just stopped talking about it. And I feel like so afraid of telling someone new that I'm a YouTuber just feels very vulnerable, of course, because there's so much of my life on the internet. And it kind of like cheats you out of like the first 24 dates you could have of like learning about a person. So I just don't want them to have access to my YouTube, but he's going to. If I give him my last name, he immediately will find my YouTube channel. What's the first thing to do? You Google it, they have a YouTube channel, I'm watching every video. So I feel like I can't even tell him my last name. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. We're not texting. He's like out of town and then I was busy and I don't cancel my plans for men. So I was not gonna cancel my plans. So we're seeing each other on Friday. And what I do appreciate is that he was like, great, I'll be in touch when I'm back in town and where I'm ready to finalize plans. So yes, texting for logistics, love it. Do it, great, otherwise we won't be talking. So that's a big, big green flag to me, love that. And now I'm just spiraling. I'm just spiraling for the most part. I have a backache, I think. This. And what if what if he's weird? 
What if I'm weird? Uh, what if I'm weird? Oh, it's me. I'm the weird one. And I know I should get in the mindset of, well, you know, if I'm, I find somebody who loves me for who I am, well, sure. Theoretically, yeah, intellectually, I agree with that statement. But in the meantime, I have to go out and be myself. And that's hard sometimes. Especially when we've had this like very kind of like suave, like sexy mystery happening on the streets. And that's not really who I am. I'm a chaotic, neurotic freak. So somehow I have to bridge the six months relationship of mysterious romance into who I actually am. That's I think what freaks me out is I'm like, Ugh. well, maybe he's a freak too. Is there anything hotter than a man not talking to you? There's nothing better. There's nothing better. So there's no way he can top this. And man, I feel like a woman. Also guys, today's video is made possible by Wayfair, which you've heard me say this. Listen, they're sponsoring this YouTube channel all month long. So I'm gonna talk to you about Wayfair. I use their products all the time. You know you're familiar with Wayfair, but they also have a YouTube channel. I love that they made this channel. I was kind of blown away when I first watched it. They have a series called The Small Stuff. I'm not a handyman, but I don't even want to say that anymore. But no, I, I still am because I need to remind y'all. This YouTube home improvement dad doing home improvement DIY projects and he's kind of figuring it out as he goes through and he talks through it. It's a good time. It's very heartwarming and I feel like if you like this channel because it's like some design info, is it anymore even? What am I even doing at this point? I don't know. But it's like, you know, design content paired with this relational dynamic that's just very sweet. They have another series as well called Interior Motives. An interior designer, Kiva Brent, shares real Wayfair product recommendations, but in like a very silly, absurd way. You get design value, humor, sweet, cute moments, and I would go check out the small stuff. You're gonna have a good time. I promise you this. I linked it in the description of this video. Subscribe to the Wayfair YouTube channel if you wanna stay up to date on their content. And thank you to Wayfair for making this whole channel possible this month. That's huge and it's super appreciated. Uh, don't stop going on a walk. Coda. Come here, baby. Where's a Coda? He's a good boy. See how good he is? Like, he really does stay with you. Running free. I like, can't even see him. His father was a business magnet who could bankroll all of their You problems. know what he means. You know None what he means. Okay, obviously. Right. The plus, then, plus, then they were all murdered. I don't think I want that. <laughs> Did you know what I meant to say? Yeah, it's been a long night. And maybe I should go. I'm I'm drunk in Whole Foods. I'm drunk in Whole Foods. I went for a walk with a bottle full of rum. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I need eggs. And now I'm just drunk in Whole Foods. So far, I've done a really good job. Where are the eggs? For the life of me, I can't remember where eggs go. They're not by the chicken. And they're not by the milk. And they're not in the produce fridge. So those are all the places I know to check. Where are eggs? Where are eggs? Eggs are near milk. What am I saying? Eggs are milk. Milk is eggs. Uh oh, whoa, I just slipped. If I slip and break my neck in the Whole Foods, I... Ooh, cookies. Nope, focus. Oh, eggs! Too many. That's more eggs than anyone needs, okay? Okay. Okay. Fucking egg paradise.
So I'm getting a new couch today. I talked about it in the fall decor living room tour I did. And so I ordered it months ago, you know, they take months to deliver. And they're, they're bringing a new couch today. So this is what I'm thinking about Street Man. I'm just all over the place. I'm oscillating between being over it and being too into it. Here are the options. I figure the options are A, there's something intolerable about him. There's either something intolerable about him or he's a scoundrel or we're gonna fall madly deeply in love. <laughs> Those feel like the options. Yeah, they're bringing a new couch today, which I'm very excited about. However, as you may notice, this couch is still here. So it's gonna be a couch party. <laughs> All right, you want the couch tour? This sofa, I like it, but I wouldn't have chosen it. It was just that like there was nothing available in COVID. You know, if you try to buy a sofa anywhere in the last like two years, the wait times are like 16 weeks, 22 weeks. I'm like, I don't even know if I'll have legs in 22 weeks. Like, I don't know what my life will look like. But this sofa, it had the shortest wait time at least. So I took it, but I kind of knew I didn't necessarily want that. The couch I got is, I'll link it. It's from Crate and Barrel. The number one biggest thing is that I needed this. I needed this and even the rest of the couch is way deeper even this part is way deeper than that one so it's so much more comfortable it is a bit longer it's super sturdy look at this look at that bounce it's the opposite of the cloud couch talked about I hate the cloud couch this is like the opposite of that first of all that's more comfortable to me and it also means that it's gonna keep its shape really well it's close to a white as the walls which is totally boring and so what I'm gonna have to do is bring the color in with a couple good accent pillows, probably like a throw blanket, which is why you'll see I never had accent pillows on this couch because I knew I was gonna resell it and I didn't wanna buy it just for that. I got it for function because this is comfortable and I can have people on it and that's to me what the couch is for. So that's the end of my very defensive rant because I know a lot of people are gonna be like, you should have kept the couch, but that is why. A new place, a new home. For a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride A new man passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in it Yo, dog. I did not, um, I don't like this angle to my face. <sighs> Looking cute in this shirt though. <laughs> Got a new shirt. Got a new shirt for no reason. I need to calm down. This is when my therapist would say, do we need to do a meditation to center? No, Nancy, I don't want to center. I did not vlog today. Most, I, every hour I feel differently. It's a roller coaster. I was feeling so grounded and at peace and like who even cares about this stupid date? Um, and then about halfway through the day, I was like, oh, he might not text me. Our conversation ended on like, he's going to text me when he's back and ready to finalize plans, which I loved because I really hate when guys want to text all week or something before they meet you. I hate that. I don't like texting anyone. But now I'm like, well, he's got one day to text me. But I suddenly started feeling very ill. Yeah, like I feel sick to my stomach right now. And how lucky I am to be able to feel that way. I'm not being sarcastic when I say how lucky am I, like truly. I think about this line from Louis. If you ever watch the show Louis, Louis complaining to some old dude and this old dude is just like, misery is wasted on the miserable. And it's so true. It's so true, like to be alive and to be sick to your stomach and to be filled with dread, to like have hopes, to wonder if you're gonna be disappointed. You never want to be in it when you're in it, but like those are literally the things that people crave when their life is full of monotony and scheduling. You know, when people are in like a committed relationship and they're getting antsy and they're a little bored, the thing they miss, it's actually, it's the unknown and it's the possibility. And part of the unknown, like the unknown is like this big fucking bucket and there's exciting moments in it and there's also like terror and like it's, it has to be both. It has to be both. So... 
I'm in the terror part right now. <laughs> what if he just legit doesn't text me? He was being so forward and like so flattering in our texts and then he could still blow me off. And that's the thing is like people do that. It would be annoying, but it wouldn't be crazy. It would be crazy if it didn't happen. I'm so much more used to somebody demonstrating some kind of effort and then you're like, oh, oh, I guess I could relax into this. They're making me feel like I should let my guard down and I should relax and then they backhand you. That is what I'm used to and that's, I feel like, what most of dating is until it's not. Until one day it's not. So it's hard to, like, all at once be vulnerable and like just know you're gonna get backhanded. But you gotta keep doing it. If you wanna ever experience anything, you gotta risk disappointment. I was literally just giving this speech to my friend like yesterday. She was texting some guy and oh my God, what if he doesn't like her? What if he doesn't wanna see her? I'm not, I'm not the friend who's gonna text back and be like, he's gonna love you. It's like, I mean, often they don't love you. Often they don't love me. Like, no, like not every guy loves me. <laughs> and that's just how it is. So I'm not gonna be like, they're all gonna love you and then have most of them not. Otherwise we'd all be married to 40 people. No, disappointment's gonna happen. And I can literally feel it in my stomach. I'm getting a stomach ulcer right now. And also, there is no other way <laughs> to get down the path other than to just throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. So here's the plan. Tomorrow, he, this fucker has till 1.30 p.m. on Thursday to tell me about Friday evening plans. Cause guess what? I would like to plan other plans. I would like to move on with my life. I would like to know how cute I have to dress 36 hours from now at 1.30, 1.31, we'll say. I am texting him something direct but vulnerable, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 more or less. And uh, I will put myself in a position to be shut down. And that means I'm alive. So that's where I'm at. Who cares? Get over it. I want you to ruin my life, you to ruin my life, you to ruin my life, yeah. I want you to fuck up my nights, yeah, fuck up my nights, yeah, all of my nights, yeah. I want you to bring it all on. If you make it all wrong, then I'll make it all right, yeah. I want you to ruin my life, you to ruin my life, you to ruin my life. What up? I'm doing a little editing work. I don't even know. I keep trying to vlog my experience of this week and I can't even keep up with my emotions. It's too much. It's a real weakness and I'm kind of, it's exhausting. I can't even breathe right now. I'm sorry if this feels so dramatic to people. I'm very dramatic. And all of this is over someone that I don't even know if I like yet. I, have, I read people well. Like that's one thing I can do well. And I feel like I usually have a very good guess or what I'm not gonna like or what's gonna be a weird fit or a good fit or whatever. And with this guy, I'm genuinely like, I can't tell if I'm gonna like regret seeing you completely or if I'm gonna be obsessed with you. Like I can't tell. And it's like giving me like heart palpitations. Like I'm like, not even in a cute way. I had to do like a really like intense couple of meditations last night just to go to bed and not feel sick last night. Like I feel sick. Wondering if he was gonna text me and he did that's the update. He texted me this morning I woke up to a text for him. So hooray, but then I'm so relieved by it And then I'm disappointed in my own relief because guess what? I don't want my well-being to ride on whether someone else texts me, you know, it's like it's uh, well I'm glad I got the text but I hate that I'm dependent on the text and I'm working so hard not to be so he texted me and said Blah 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 sounds like we're still meeting up. I feel like I just like paid like a huge high price, like an emotional price. Like I bought something super expensive online and I'm just waiting for it to arrive to see what the deal is in person. It's like I've paid this huge emotional deposit that I can't get back. It's non-refundable. <laughs> the way I've let the like stress and wonder and anxiety riddle my body, can't get that back. And I just want to know. I'm just like, just let the package arrive so I can figure out if I need to burn it. And then if there's the chance that the package just doesn't come and all I did was like pay all this money. No, I would so rather just know that you'll reject me and move forward. I just want to go to sleep, you know? I just want to go to sleep and not open my eyes for a while. That's what I feel like. 
I guess I should go do some more work. cozy sweater today reformation I'm feeling cozy like a bitch like what are the chances that this is someone I actually connect with it's very low the chances are very low but it's a good exercise and I'm gonna wear a cute dress and I'm gonna practice respecting myself or whatever and spending time with people who are nice I do think he's at least he seems respectful so congratulations to me that's growth also I'm wearing a zit sticker so sometimes I'm wearing those and I forget my bad what is this a visual medium but yeah like what are the chances that this is actually good and I feel <laughs> I have I've put extra pressure on it by talking about it in the vlog because now I'm afraid of disappointing everyone but like it you know this is my life it's not a movie I try and film it like a movie but it is my life so it might not be that fun it might be disappointing but I will say you know if you guys end up feeling disappointed just think about how I feel so <laughs> My total deterioration during this week was so confusing, even to me, because I don't really have a huge fear of rejection. I mean, no one likes to be rejected and it would be upsetting, but overall, I'm not afraid of rejection. At least I'm not paralyzed by it. I was an actor for a decade, specifically a failed actor. Living through rejection was my literal job. I'm probably better at handling rejection than most. But I realized that what was destroying me was this total loss of control. When my previous six year relationship became strained, I coped by completely isolating myself. I spent time alone. I started a YouTube channel. I loved time alone. If I spent all my time alone, then he and I couldn't get in a fight. If I spent all my time alone and never relied on anyone but myself, then I could never be disappointed. And when we eventually separated, it became a point of pride for me to rely on no one. Even when I cried or panicked, I would refuse to call a friend. I wanted to deal with everything on my own. I wanted to be the person who took care of me. I wanted to be the one who made things okay. I wanted to never again be at the whims of someone else's influence in my life. That was actually a really empowering exercise for me at the time. But long term, of course, that's really not how relationships work. There has to be some dependency. There has to be vulnerability. There has to be a possibility that you're going to get really, really hurt. There has to be, and I know that. But to relinquish all that control, all that certainty in myself, to put myself on the timeline of someone else's text was excruciating. It felt like everything I've tried to undo, but I'm lucky to be able to subject myself to that kind of risk because there was a time that I wasn't ready, wasn't able to subject myself to the chance of excruciating things. But I'm ready now and that feels good because I have something that I didn't have years ago and it's not the guarantee that a stranger won't hurt me, but the trust that I will be able to survive it whatever happens. <laughs> I don't even know how to start this. Good, good news, bad news, right? <laughs> I can't talk. Good news, bad news. 
The bad news is that I won't be talking about this anymore on YouTube. This is the last time I'll be talking about it because I do think he's gonna be around in my life. Okay, hold on though, everyone hold on. I am gonna answer a bunch of questions um, as much as I can without violating someone's privacy. This is the weird thing. It's, you know, it's my vlog life and real life coming together in a weird way. And I kind of don't know how to handle it. Before we get into answering questions and what went down, I'm gonna say, first of all, as a disclaimer, I just ask that everyone keeps in mind that like, A, I'm completely incapable of representing his experience. I can only represent myself and I can only even represent parts of my own experience. There's gonna be a million things I leave out or that I'm not able to share. Yeah, I just hope that before someone writes a comment, like just pause for a moment and remember that it's in, it's gotta be so much more nuanced than I can ever relay in a video because all relationships are. That being said, what I am gonna share is what went down. <laughs> so. We went on a date, it was about two weeks ago now. I filmed it all like a little while ago. We went on like a really nice dinner date and we went to like a lounge jazz bar, 18th Street Lounge, I think. Without violating any of his privacy, I will say that he remains as cute as ever. And it turns out he's also extremely kind. Like the, the adjective I kept using to describe him to people is like kind hearted. Not nice, like, oh, he's a nice guy. Cause sometimes nice, like being a nice person is like self-serving. It can be a manipulative thing, but he seems genuinely kind. He's very complimentary. I think when someone's very complimentary of me, it, it makes me feel like, what do you want from me? Like what's going on? But now that I know him better, I'm just like, oh, you're just like a pretty considerate person and are not like, trying to fuck with my head <laughs> so that's refreshing thoughtful like respectful empathetic very quickly into hanging out was like i just respect you as a person and i feel like i haven't had many romantic dynamics with people quite like that and then we went on a second date third and fourth i think we've hung out like four times i'm seeing him again this weekend and we have also discussed the fact that we don't know each other at all. I don't know if it will develop into like a further deeper romantic thing or if we'll end up being friends or somewhere in between, like I really don't know. But I know that we can't really explore that honestly while I report on it on YouTube because A, I don't want him to be in the back of his mind like worried about like what I'm gonna share on the internet and for myself even, I don't want to be worried about like, how am I going to relay this to people? I need to be not thinking about it as well. So for that reason, I feel like we're just going to like take the time to figure out, I don't know. Right now, I think we just enjoy spending time together and I'm not really overthinking it. I don't know what or if this will become something else. We're kind of just being in the moment where we both agreed, you know, maybe even if we like weren't hanging out and being hot together. I feel like we could be friends because we just feel like compatible and like there's mutual respect. I do want to share, I'll share a couple like fun like discoveries I had from his side of this, this whole story. We talked about like a couple different moments where we'd passed each other on the street and there were moments that I remembered that he had not remembered. There were moments that he knew about that I did not. He said the first time that he like saw me on the street, it was like over a year ago. It was like well over a year ago that he saw me like somewhere in Adams Morgan and remembered me, which I was like, fucking yeah, that made so much sense to me because when I like, when I was talking about him the first time in a vlog, I said like, he looked like he recognized me. He Either it's a look he gives all women all the time, night and day, or he, he looks like he recognizes me. And he did. He literally had seen me way before I had seen him. That being said, it maybe dates back longer to him, but I think it also was not as dramatic in his head as it was in mine. You know, I've made it more of a thing by talking about it in videos. I don't know if it would have been as built up if I just didn't talk about it in videos. So we talked about that. Yeah, there were like a bunch of incidents I had just forgotten about. Yeah, it was not as dramatic in his head, which is no surprise because no one's as dramatic as this. Oh my God, I was trying really hard not to tell him my last name because I didn't want him to see my YouTube channel. I certainly didn't want him to see that video. And so I was just being really evasive about my name. <laughs> 
And then the more time we spent together, you know, I would never have talked about him in a video if I ever thought he was going to become a real person in my life. I thought he was, I thought it was like talking about the cashier at CVS. Like, this isn't a person in my life, it's just like a funny thing that happened. And then he became a person in my life. And so the more like in focus he became in my life, the more it felt weird to not tell him about this video I made. A very bizarre conundrum. And all of a sudden, I was watching Rosemary's Baby over the weekend, great movie. And my takeaway from that movie for some reason was just that I needed to tell him about the video I made about Street Man. So after like a lot of sweating and freaking out, I just texted him, I was like, hey, have you watched my YouTube channel by chance? And he was like, no, um, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I, I think he's telling the truth. And then I just sent him the video. I almost wanted to film the whole experience of me like deciding to press send on the YouTube video to him. I did not film it. But if you're wondering, it looked a lot like this. <laughs> send it! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I was not scared about his reaction. I was a little scared. <laughs> like it's a little nerve wracking, but what was scarier to me was feeling like I was deceiving him. It didn't start as information I owed him, but the more we got to know each other, the more it felt like I needed to let him know. And it was just weighing on my conscience. And as you guys know, I'm like an, probably an excessively honest person. I feel like I can't keep shit to myself. So it has to come out. Like I always, I have to like unburden my own conscience. So I was prepared for him to be like, yeah, this really isn't what I signed up for. Thanks, but no thanks. That would have been hurtful, but I at least would have just like been honest with him, whatever. Uh, but he had a very positive reaction. He just like laughed a lot. He was like texting me while watching it. He thought it was very funny. When we were speaking in person at one point, I just told him how like a lot of our interactions I found very overwhelming. And then he watched the YouTube video and he was like, okay, I understand why you felt overwhelmed. <laughs> but he thought it was hilarious and just flattering. And I don't know. Yeah, he was very sweet about it. But I did ask him permission to make a video just kind of wrapping everything up today, which is this video. What else? Um, God, when we were hanging out, when we've been like out and about in the town, I kept being so afraid that someone was gonna come up and be like, I love your videos. And then I just, I was like, what would I do if I was with him before I told him about my YouTube channel? I think I would have just been like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> just pretended, pretended I was someone else. Lol. I'm very glad we met. I think I would have felt really upset if we had never met up and it would have been like, I needed the closure just of meeting him. So that I'm very happy about. And it turns out he's like a very kind, interesting person. I won't say much more about him because I don't want to violate, violate his privacy. But I hope that that satisfies <laughs> the street man curiosity. I, feel, I felt so stressed about like how to wrap this up because I started talking about it just thinking it was a funny story. I never thought it would become like a full thing. The way that it's kind of become a thing. And then at the same time, it's my life and it doesn't have like a f clear ending. You know, it's still freaking happening. So I wish there was a way that I could just be like, and this is how it ended. But I just don't know. I do not regret making videos about it because it was so much fun. And I just love a story and I love the dramatics. And I hope you guys don't regret following along. But if you see me in a tall, dark haired man around town, it's probably the street man. I feel like I probably won't give any update unless something big happens with him. Like if we decide we're definitely not seeing each other anymore or if we decide this is a committed relationship or something then you'll get an update but other than that i'm probably just gonna let it i'll i'll say if there's an update i'll make a video it says dating update how about that um but other than that you can assume that we are continuing to get to know each other <laughs> i wish i had like a better like way to punctuate the end of this sentence this has been the story of street man the legend of the street man lives on I hope everyone can see like a little bit of themselves in it, but thank you for letting me share it with you. And um, no more updates on that for a while now. <laughs> ah! Oh, okay, I gotta stop talking now. I gotta go, I gotta go. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Hey, I, I'm just a bachelor. Look
Looking for a partner 